Hello there. Not only are electric vehicles getting more expensive to run, they might even sink Joe Biden's presidential election chances. It's becoming clearer that electric vehicles are going to end up being just about as expensive to run as internal combustion engine vehicles are right now. All down to the fast rising insurance costs and the requirement for the government to find a tax replacement for fuel duty. But it's not just in the UK where there's this ongoing ice powered car versus EV argument going on. In the US, we see Donald Trump backing ICE cars and Joe Biden going for EVs. And the big issue for US workers is the jobs market. US car workers are worried that when EVs come along, due to their simpler construction, the big auto companies might not need so many workers. I suppose that's down to the green jobs explosion we keep hearing about. I mean, aren't we always being told that the greener we go, the more jobs there will be? Tell that one to the car makers of the US. Although looking at the total unpredictability of wind and solar power, we could see a sudden surge in treadmill parks where the proles can be ordered to spend an hour of their day trudging out electrical power to fill the EVs of the rich and powerful. Anyway, it's this employment angle that could do for Joe Biden's re-election chances next year. Especially as the US has a policy of hire at will, which means you can hire people when you need them and then fire them when you don't. Not something we are familiar with in the UK, of course. Anyway, Biden is under pressure. He's currently polling at 48% compared to Trump's 52%. And if people are beginning to realise that the EV industry could rob them of a job, then it could see a surge in support for the Donald. While in the UK, it is independent garages that are worried about their futures. It transpires that there are heavy software costs involved in the repair and maintenance of EVs, presumably because they are the new thing on the block. But then there's the battery costs and the requirement to take on a whole new set of trade qualifications to be able to maintain and repair EVs safely. And this looks to be a challenge, with the IMI, the Institute of the Motor Industry, predicting that on current trends, by 2030, the UK will have a shortage of 15,700 tech-safe EV technicians, when the required number will be 90,000, so we'll be 17.44% short. And two years later, by 2032, the problem will be worse, with a need for 111,000 qualified technicians as EV uptake continues, but by then having a shortage of 25,600 tech-safe EV technicians, or 23%. And that is not something that will help to keep the now rising EV insurance rates down, as EVs could then take longer to repair and there will be queues for maintenance too. And in the here and now, insurers are beginning to either get cold feet about insuring EVs or they are hiking their premiums by as much as tenfold as the cost of repairing them go through the roof. The overall average was a 72% increase in premiums. In fact, the cost of repairing the battery, if it gets damaged, can be prohibitive, causing the vehicle to be written off with even minor damage. And overall repair costs are about 25% more than the cost to repair an internal combustion engine car. Jonathan Hewitt, the chief executive of Thatcham Research, the motor insurer's automotive research centre, said the challenge is that we have no way of understanding whether the battery has been compromised or damaged in any way. That sounds like a bit of a stopper when there's a risk of a thermal runaway if it is damaged.
The threat of thermal runaway means that a catastrophic fire could take place if the cells of the battery have been damaged in a collision, Mr Hewitt said. What we're struggling to understand at the moment is how we approach that diagnostic technique. It's like a doctor trying to understand what's wrong with you without any notes or an x-ray. Hmm, so what exactly are these tech-safe technicians being taught to get them round that one then? Poke around a bit and hope for the best. And on the subject of insurance costs, Mr Hewitt said... The battery is an extremely expensive component of an electric vehicle and until we find efficient ways of dealing with it, we have the challenge of high premiums for electric vehicles, which nobody wants. No sh Sherlock. And then there's the requirement to keep damaged DVs 50 feet away from other vehicles in case it spontaneously combusts. And that takes up repair yard real estate at an alarming rate. Which by 2035 will mean insurance companies having to fork out an extra 900 million quid a year for quarantine facilities. Oh sorry, not the insurance companies, but the insurance premium payers. Now, before moving on, you might not be aware that the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has just told the House of Commons that UK intelligence agencies believe that it was a rocket from within the Gaza Strip that struck the hospital last week and not one fired from Israel. He also announced 20 million quid in aid to Gaza, as well as saying... Hateful extremism has no place in our society. Calls for jihad and for Muslim armies to rise up are not only a threat to the Jewish community, but also a threat to our democratic values. Please tell that to Sadiq Khan and his Met Police. Richard. According to an article in the Daily Wire, 57.5% of a certain demographic in America think Hamas was justified in their attacks on Israel as part of their struggle for a Palestinian state, which is, in reality, 57.5% of that demographic supporting Hamas's actions against innocent women and children. Well, it's a good job we don't have, well, such demographical sympathies replicated here in Britain. <laughs> or else we would have a real problem on our hands, wouldn't we? <laughs> and in other news, the Daily Mail reports Kate Blanchett is, is blasted by Cornish villagers over non-stop drilling and banging at her £1.6 million beachside cottage as builders renovate her home on Hollywood-on-Sea. I would say this is completely, totally unimportant news. Total drivel when the world is teetering on the brink of World War III. However, I have to say, Kate Blanchett was pretty amazing in Lord of the Rings. And therefore, nah, it's a load of pointless rubbish. But this is the bread and circuses the establishment is throwing at us. And to be expected. But hang on. Oh, wait. What's this incredibly important piece of news in the Daily Mirror? ITV dancing on ice favourites among three stars quitting the show. Dancing on ice announced fan favourite professional skater Matt Evers is among three stars leaving the ITV programme. I have no idea how life can possibly carry on as normal. Why are you covering this r rubbish, Richard? You complete idiot! I hear you cry. Well... Good point, actually. Well, you need to understand that in between real events in the news, there are also fake events in the news. But there are also news events that will be propagated to distract you and keep your distracted, keep you in a distracted state. And we all need a good shake-up to prevent our cognitive state from slipping from critical thinking into a substitute state of being where people like the Kardashians become important. They are not. You need to keep yourself in check and always remember that you are being played continuously by the media. I mean, it's like this. I just read in The Sun that McDonald's is cutting the price of its single McMuffin to £1.19. 
So what? How did that become a story? Who wants to know or read that or listen to that? Mm, I wonder. How did it get become in the news? <laughs> look, it's all just rubbish, junk information to keep you asleep. So look up and stop gazing down and keep reframing your mind. Anyway, leave your comments in the comment section below, and Jeff and I will have a good read of them. Blah 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 blah. Bye for now.